of our assistant directors. And, you know, one of Sorry them would have changed if he'd loss. known what was in that memo. He said, I want to, you know, nothing would have uh, been blocked on Musawi if I'd known this was the case. But he claims he never saw the memo. Okay, so you know, going back to the problems, okay, some of it is just not even reading your memos. And this is when your name is right on the memo. Because after 9-11, people would say, I didn't read or see the memo. Then the other excuse was, well, I read the memo, but I didn't share the information. George Tennant was briefed on the case in Minnesota in, in August, you know, two and a half weeks before 9-11, uh, when the directors uh, of the CIA, the director of Central Intelligence, George Tennant, and Richard Clark, were said to have their hair on fire. They were getting so much information in about uh, bin Laden determined to strike. And so, and actually the, the chapter title in the 9-11 Commission is, the system was blinking red. They had lots of information, later they called these dots, and they said it was a failure to connect the dots because they had a lot of information. Well that's, um, and I'm just gonna, just to show you how much, how, how uh, people said, well no one would have known. We had an actual supervisor at the time who was on the phone and, and really quite desperate to make to see that the headquarters would authorize some further investigation based on a, a twenty some pages of facts that they had developed about a suspicious uh, flight student in Minnesota. Who, by the way, ended up to be the only one uh, prosecuted for the 9/11 terrorist attacks in Musawi. And so he was desperate and he's on the phone and he says, "Don't you?" And the guy say, "No, we can't do anything." And he said, well, don't you know, this is a guy who could fly into the World Trade Center. He said this in August. And then after 9-11, Condi Rice said, no one would have known a plane would fly into a, a building. I mean, I sat there and went, oh, my goodness. You know, it's like complete uh, cover-up here. Besides the failure to share information inside agencies, between agencies, the 9-11 Commission said it also was a failure of the government to share information with the public. And this is very crucial because we've gotten into a situation now where we, we say we would just prefer not to know what they are doing to protect us. And if that means they classify and keep more things secret, I, I want that to happen because I want to stay safe. It is precisely the opposite. And that is actually the lesson of 9-11. The public is usually the ones who will learn some information, and maybe it ties in with things that are, that are already in the public domain. The fellow passengers of the underwear bomber, the shoe bomber, the, the street vendors in New York City where a, a, a car that was loaded with a bomb came in and they noticed smoke, suspicious smoke coming in. You're gonna find, and there's many more examples, you're gonna find that it is actually the public that actually prevents terrorism. The, the great example of Edward Snowden, for instance, and afterwards they said, oh no, we've got to do all this collection of, 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 of information and trillions of pieces of data, whatever, because uh, that's how we prevent terrorism. Okay, that was the excuse that was initially said. They said, we've got 54 examples. And when they were pressed about it, what did they find? They found that uh, there was really no, no real true example of this massive uh, dragnet collection